Okay, so I got this ASI Sustaniac that I painted black over, and I'm going to try to do this ran style paint job to show you guys the method I did it. Not saying it's the absolute 100% correct way to do it, though this is what I've been told. All you got to do is put cardboard or some index cards or some kind of material to block, and you, to block the paint from going directly on the guitar. You're actually kind of painting. You're shooting at the cardboard in this case to block it and get that line wisp effect. Okay, I'm using a Rodak W70, which I've never used before, and I didn't really like it for this, to tell you the truth. It was, um, you can't see it on this video, but it's kind of making too much overspray splatter, like, like sparkles, like paint specks on the body compared to, like, the Binx M7. I'm not sure if this gun is designed to be like a primer. I don't know the tip of it. That's probably why. But yeah, here's what I'm. Here's how you do it. It's I'm holding the cardboard. I'm kind of spraying more at the cardboard, not necessarily the guitar, and then it bounces off and gives that kind of three-dimensional line wisp effect. Okay. So I right now I'm doing short bursts. I'm not doing long bursts. Okay, I'm kind of playing it safe. I couldn't really get... I'm kind of messing with the PSI right here and everything. I'm not liking how it's going on. Um, on this guitar, I'm getting too many paint specs on it. Some, I, I adjusted the settings beforehand. I thought it was good, but it wasn't. But some kind of... I think I turned a PSI down. A little less paint coming out. That might have helped a little bit. So yeah, that's it. It works better when you have like a dark base and then, for example, like this and then a white. I'm trying to do like the white wisp effect. To me, that kind of makes it stand out the most. Or in contrast, if you did a white base and then like a black, right? So I'm just putzing around right here. PSI, I think, is right around 40 or 50 on the gun. I think it's this Rodak W70. I got this cheap Harbor Freight PSI gauge, and it just sometimes it doesn't work right, so sometimes I'm never sure. Now, I'm using a conventional style gun, not high volume, low pressure, okay? The disadvantages is that, you know, you kind of waste more paint, but in this case, it works out better because it gives a better bounce off effect than the high volume, low pressure, I think. I actually did use my high volume, low pressure on it. I tried experimenting one time. It, it it did not work as good as the conventional. However, I, I do believe that's because the high volume, low pressure spray gun I got is made is a primer gun and most it made to really lay down. So I get a lot of over over spray s specs on it, which I don't see it. You could probably do this with high volume, low pressure. And I'm out, actually I'm going to get a low volume, low pressure, and I want to see how that works as well. But right now you get a to me you get a better bounce off effect with these conventional solid guns. That being said, I'm just a hobbyist, I'm not a professional painter. Someone with more experience would probably know the answer to that question. But I'm basically, yeah, I'm just experimenting with everything. I'm experimenting with the PSI, but this is this is really all you gotta do, right? Right now I'm going through an angle, I'm going through the side with the cardboard. You don't have to use cardboard, you can use, you know, really anything to block it. To be honest, cardboard doesn't work as good because kind of it kinda because the powerful PSI these conventional guns kind of shoot as you can see it kind of shoots it away and that's what caused a smear so like now i switched to this piece of wood because i was like screw this you know i was kind of getting irritated with cardboard and to be honest it might even work better because it doesn't when you spray it doesn't you know there's more weight to it and right now i'm doing longer bursts i'm not doing the short burst now i'm not doing kind of longer bursts you get more th more thicker you know you can see like i'm uh, you can see it's more defined now however you, you gotta be more careful, right? Because I'm holding down the trigger longer, which means it could splatter. The paint on the board could accumulate and splatter on the guitar and ruin everything, right? So that's the risk you gotta pretty much take when you do this. You have to really just experiment with PSA. And once you practice it, it's really not dramatically difficult. It's just, you know, the more colors you do, the more layers of colors, the more chances you might mess up and do something that you don't want to be done. But yeah, I'm holding the trigger a little longer here. You can, you can see it gets a little more defined white.
Now these conventional style guns, you do need a more powerful air compressor. Not necessarily if you're doing something like this, I don't think, because I'm just doing like short bursts. Even if I'm painting the guitar, I got a 3.5 horsepower, 20 gallon one. It seems to get the job done with all these conventional guns. Now if I was painting a car where I have to constantly have the trigger going, then it probably wouldn't be enough. But, if I, but with a high volume of pressure, which is what's required if you're a business now, then you need a little smaller air compressor. And the low volume, low compressor guns, you can use it really small. I'm actually really interested to see how that low volume, low pressure gun works in this situation. Because if it does, it'd be, it'd probably be a little easier, I think. So, so there you go. You, know, you kind of got a decent effect just doing this way. Now I got the yellow paint going. I'm, I just grabbed something. This is just some cheap late uh, acrylic paint from Michaels. This is all the stuff I'm using. So I got the yellow going. This is a Binks M15, which is kind of like a touch-up gun. And honestly, you could almost maybe paint like a whole guitar with this. It's a pretty, pretty nifty little gun. You can find them cheap. It's a conventional style gun, and it's also nice because so the paint is stored in that container below it, right? And so you kind of waste less paint. Sometimes those with the bigger, like that Rodak MW70 or like the Binks Model 7, the siphons on the bottom, well, I don't really need that much paint to do stuff like this, right? But as the paint gets lower, it's, it gets hard to suck it up. So if I'm at a weird angle, then I won't necessarily get the paint sucked up. So you kind of might waste a little more paint. This one's a little more, makes more sense to use this Binks M15. I guess overall, this Binks F M15 can just do the whole job. It's probably, I have a little more control over it. PSI, it's not shooting everywhere. Also, when I realized this is that I got to get a different method of hanging the guitar. It's like, because it gets annoying because I'm bouncing into it. It's going back and forth, which is something you probably don't want. And then, um... I, look, I was looking at uh, Keys Le Carbon, the way they design, designed a contraption to kind of paint the guitars their neck through. So I think I might try to make one of those so when I start paint, painting the guitars. But yeah, I kind of like the black of wood a little better because it's more sturdy. But I guess, you know, anything the black, any kind of straight object like this, you know, you can, you can get really creative with this stuff, like multiple colors. To me, three colors maybe might be the best three colors that contrast to each other i think that gives the best effect but it's not quite needed you can really do anything but yeah it's um it's, it's working okay i didn't get any smearing i think i smeared it a f just a few times i was going kind of fast but better than that last attempt in the last video but that's the main thing. You don't want to smear everything like you get when i'm moving the board across the body to smear it then it's totally ruined here I'm kind of getting close. You can't see from the camera that much, but to me that that Rodak W70, I couldn't get that set up, and it was too many paint specs flying everywhere. It was kind of like the HVLP gun. I didn't like how that. You can't. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. That's too much. I guess overspray. I but a kind of overspray I didn't want, which, yeah, you can kind of see it right there. It's kind of honestly didn't work out that well. I am. I gotta adjust the PSI a little better in a few things, but from a distance you can't notice. But once you get up close, some people might like that though. They might like that kind of a spot, spotty effect, but not me. Okay, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. There you go.